Statistics and Excel. Normal distribution calories example part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in it. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Excel, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you want to start from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet having just our beginning data on it so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. And we're gonna continue on with that now. Quick recap of what we have done thus far. We had our data on the left. We had our calorie counts, which were counted uh, by day. We made a table out of it so we can sort by date or by calories if we so choose. We calculated the mean or average standard deviation, median mode. The mean being close to the standard deviation as well as graphing the actual data and having it look somewhat like a bell curve as well as just basically having an assumption about the types of data being calorie counts, which you would assume would probably hover around a center point. Otherwise, you know, you would think someone would get uh, heavier or, or lighter over uh, a time frame would give us an indication that a bell curve might be something that would be useful. We then wanted to plot the bell curve. Now to do so, we took four standard deviations below and above, and then we ran into the issue of, do I really want to plot one calorie at a time. If we do that, it would be great because then our percentages over here would basically add up to 100% uh, about because we have four standard deviations and that's nice. But if we go four standard deviations below, we end up with these negative numbers, which is something that is impossible in actual practice because you can't have the negative calories. And uh, also we end up with very small units of data. So when I plot this out, we get to these small uh, percentages. And if we compare that then to our actual count, then we can, we can compare the actual count in terms of, uh, we can take these percentages times the count, meaning the number of, of calorie counts in days that we did. And it's gonna be difficult to make a comparison between that and the actual data because again, the actual data is gonna to have to be uh, uh, one, each of these calorie counts will have to be a whole number instead of this fraction of a number. So whether we do it by whole numbers or by, or, or trying to do the count or by a percent, we end up with this issue. So we have to basically, the next thing we wanna do is say, okay, let's add some buckets and see if we can do this uh, with our buckets. And also just note that if we were to uh, plot our actual data, like if I tried to plot my actual data as we have seen in the past on top of this graph, it's not going to work quite well because I have too much, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of blank space in the actual data. So if I tried, so, so this is in terms of percentages, you can see if I tried to say, I'm just going to add 
my actual data in terms of percentages on top of it as we've seen in prior presentations to try to see the comparison between the two we're going to run into an issue let's just show that charts we're going to go and say select data and i'm going to say okay let's add the percent of total this column i'm going to delete what's in here thus far hit this little button and then select from here Control shift down and enter and then okay so there we have it i'm going to say okay and so now if i scroll on back up we're going to see so now it gets all messed up right and that's because again we have this this issue with the with the too many units of data so it's not going to line up let's undo that and before i continue i should have changed the x's down here last time so let's do that now i'm going to go to the chart design data and let's go to the edit and select this item and i want to pick up my calorie counts here on the x's shift up so i don't pick up the total and okay so there it looks like it's picking it up i'm going to say okay so now we have it goes on down to the zeros obviously in, in practice it's going to stop you know at zero because we're not going to have those negative numbers but if you want to see the full bell curve it's going to give you that information now the other thing to just keep in mind is remember that because we had so many counts we have pretty slim slim slices of data so when you think about like integral calculus you know usually you think of it as you know an infinite area of these uh of these lines right well we're getting pretty close if we were to sum up all of these lines because we have such small uh amounts right so we'll take a look that'll come into play possibly shortly here so now let's say that we're, we're going to say let's make a skinny l and say all right how can we kind of compare this data i'm going to pull this to the side get it out of the way get out of my way man i'm doing stuff here i'm doing stuff here let's make an x and a y or let's make an x and then uh let's say that the x is going to be from zero to let's say like 400 400 and these will be kind of our buckets and then to 800 and so on and i'm going to go i'm going to select those three control or the fill handle and bring it down to 5600 our upper limit so it brings it down to 5,600 because that's our our upper X or it's greater than our upper X. So that should work. So I'm going to go back on over and then this, I don't want Y, I want the actual frequency. And then I'm going to say home tab uh, alignment. Let's center it black, white, wrapping the text. And let's make this the same black, white and center it and so now we're going to do our frequency so i can do this with uh the actual data now so we did the frequency over here you'll recall and it wasn't very helpful because we're if we, when we go up calorie by calorie then it's not going to give us we're going to get sparse ones every once in a while on all of these calorie by calorie data but now i'm going to do a frequency with the actual data so for the second one we're going to be picking up everything that is going from zero uh, up to the the 400. So let's try that. We're going to say this is going to be equal the frequency tab, and we'll pick up the data array, which is our actual data way over here, and we'll pick up the whole thing, and then enter. Oh, hold on a second. That's not the whole formula. And then I have to say comma, and we want our bins now. Let's pull this to the side so you can see it. Then the bends are going to be from this zero on down control shift down i'm going to scroll back up so there it is and then closing this up and that's not a close close it up and enter so there we have it it goes a little far so i'm going to double click this go to that last bit and bring it back to 15. and so there we have it so then our total count if i sum this up alt equals should be that 457 which matches our 457 when we just counted the data. So that's our double check that it looks like it's picking everything up. So we had 400s, anything from zero to 400, we had five of those. Anything from f above 400 to, and including 814, and then six from 800 to 1,200 and so on and so forth. 
Now we might want to do a percent of the total in our bucket, so we can also do that this way, percent of total. And I'm going to say this is going to be font group, black, white. Let's wrap it. Let's center it. This is going to be equal to this number divided by the total now, which is that 457 F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute dollar sign before the N and the 17. Enter. Let's percentify it. Home tab, number group, percentify, adding some decimals, and then double click the fill handle to take it on down. I don't want the 100 to be just doing this divided by this, so I'm going to say delete that and instead sum up to get that 100 alt equals for our check number there's our 100 uh, that checks out so we can do that now i also want to group my p of x's i could do this a couple different ways uh, i i could say well look i want to get all of my p of x's that go from negative to zero that's going to be my first bucket and then all of my all of my p of x's that go from uh, that, that go from uh, zero to 400 and so on. Now, this isn't the perfect way to do it because you might say, well, then it's, you're like summing up, you're summing things up. But again, this is where it comes into play that because these are such, we're using such small units, uh, we're gonna get pretty close to the, to the actual answer, even though we're kind of summing this up and then we'll show another way to do it uh, as well. So, so if I was to, so I could sum up the percentages which I can compare to these percentages, or I could sum up this count number. That's why we did the count number too. And you know, we can do either, either of those methods. Let's do the percentage though. We're gonna say this is gonna be the P of X frequency. I'll just say freak when C, it's the freaky P of S, X, and then alignment wrap center Okay, so to do this, we could use like a sum if uh, formula. So I could say something like this equals sum if s, because there's going to be some ifs, and then brackets. That's the one we want. The sum range, the range that we want it to be summing, is going to be this one. So I'm going to put my cursor in the P of x on the percentages. Control shift down. I don't want to pick up the total, so shift up and then I'm holding down control backspace to get back up to the top. And then the criteria range is going to be the criteria of the criteria is going to be these X's. So I'm going to select this whole thing. I'm going to put my cursor G2 control shift down and then shift backspace not to pick up the total control backspace to get back up to the top and then comma and the criteria is that we want it to be, I'm going to say, we have to put brackets around our less than. We want it to be less than or equal to, I've got to put not brackets, but quotes around that and then tie it together with a not and, that's our not, and we're going to be picking it less than or equal to the zero. So this should be picking up everything that's in the negatives up to the zero. And then I'm going to close it up and enter and so we have let's make a percent home tab number group percentifying it add a couple decimals we're at the 0.36 okay so this next one's going to be a little different because i'm going to have two criterias now because i want it to be less than uh the 400 but greater than zero and then we can copy it down so we're going to do it again equals so we'll say sum if and have the S brackets. We've got the sum range. The sum range is going to be the P of X. Control shift down, shift up so we don't pick up the total. Control backspace back to the top. And then I'm going to say comma. We want the criteria range, which are the X's. So we're going to select the X at the top. Control shift down and then shift back to go back up to the top or shift up and then control backspace to go back to the top. And then comma. We want the criteria, the first criteria, it needs to be greater than zero. So I'm gonna put some quotes so I can put a greater than sign, end quote, and tie it together with an and. You need the and before you select that cell, which is the zero. 
And then comma criteria two starts with the criteria range. We don't need to put in the sub range again, just the criteria range again, which are at the X's. So I'm gonna put my cursor at the top there, control shift down, shift up, control backspace to get back to the top, and then comma, and we want the second criteria less than or equal to the 400. So I'm gonna put quotes, and then so I can add the less than and an equal for less than or equal to, end quote, tie it together with an and, and then you can select the 400 and close this up. Let's see if it works, enter. I'm gonna to go to the home tab, numbers, percentify, add some decimals. Looks great, I'd like to copy it down, but I need to make sure I absolute reference anything that needs absolute referencing. So I'm gonna double click on it. This, these items over here, I need them to stay the same. So I'm gonna select F4 here, dollar signs, F4 here, dollar signs, here too. F4, and then this one I do want to move down. The M, anything in column M, I want to move down relative, so I'll leave those as they are. This one, however, is over in G. I want it to be absolute, therefore F4 dollar sign before the G and the two, and enter. Now I should be able to click on it and double click the fill handle, bringing it on down. So, so there you have it, and you can see uh, that we, we can compare these two things now, right? So now we have something that's actually comparable, whereas we didn't have it when we did it calorie by calorie, and you can see they're somewhat comparable. So, so now we're saying, okay, these line up and it looks like the bell curve might be a good thing to use. I'm gonna say Alt-Enter to, to sum this up, Home tab, uh, Number, Percentify, and there's our 100% about. Now I could also take these numbers and multiply it times my actual count to get an estimate of what Y count would be based on the actual bell curve uh, numbers. Or I can do the same thing and, and then add up all of the, all of the uh, frequencies that we did over here. So for example, I could do this. This is gonna be the P of X uh, times, times say the count. That's not the times, times the count. And so I'm gonna say now home tab, alignment, center, wrapping the text, black and white. Okay, and so actually we did this over here. This one, this is the one I was looking at, right? So we did the P of X times the count over here. But when we did that over here, we got counts that are gonna be very small due to the fact that we're doing one calorie at a time. So we could do a formula similar to what we did over here on this column, right? Or I can basically repeat what we did here with these percentages, uh, and that's what we'll do on this one. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is gonna be the count, which equals the count, which was 457. That's our sample. If that's our sample count times, these are the percentages that we think are gonna be below zero up to zero based on our norm.dist calculation. So I'll pick that up and enter. So we'd have two there, double clicking on that. I'm going to make the total absolute, which is down at the bottom there. So I'm gonna say F4, dollar sign before the N and the 17, enter, and then double click to, to pick it up on down. So now we can compare our counts as well as you know the percentages. So this would be based on the bell curve. And so now we have this comparative data and you can see it's somewhat uh, comparative in nature now. So if I sum this up, alt equals, we're gonna get to that 457, of course, again. And so now we can, we can do something like compare our actual data to, to the bell curve data that we had that we couldn't do before. You'll recall that this was our bell curve data, but because it was so fine in detail, we couldn't really plot our actual data on top of it. But now we've got these two things that line up pretty well. So if we wanted to plot them together, we could do so. So I could say something like uh, either the percents doesn't, I could do either the percents or the actual numbers. Let's do the uh, percents. So I'm gonna say, let's take the percents of the total. And then I'm gonna say insert and let's do a bar graph. So we'll say, boom, bar graph. 
and there it is I'll pull this to the side I'll get rid of the total or the title <laughs> and then I have to add our own X's which should be these numbers so I'm going to click on it chart design data and let's go to the edit and then add our X's as is our general rule so there we have it and so that looks good and now let's see if we can plot the p of x's on top of it to see how close they kind of line up now that we've put our buckets in place so i can say all right let's go to the chart design data and then let's add another one for the p of x now and we're going to hold on a second wait a second here before i do that let's add not edit add another one which is going to be the p of x and then selecting this deleting that and selecting our data right there say okay and boom so now we've got some comparative data so now we were able to put those into buckets and do something somewhat comparative which we again we can say okay it looks kind of like the bell curve would be something that would be giving us some useful information now I just want to show also that we could do this do this frequency distribution over here where we did which one did I did I do this on so see how we summed these up uh, this way so again that kind of works pretty well given the fact that we have these very fine lines as you can see when we graphed it but uh, we but we we could do it another way which which would be to basically use uh, formulas so we can define our lower and upper area and then basically use the norm dot dist formulas so to see that uh, let's go down here and say this is going to be my lower and upper and then this is going to be the p of x and then let's make this our headers home tab font group black white wrap that we don't really need to wrap it i'll just center it and then i'm going to say let's put the starting lower at uh negative one and the upper is or i can put the lower at negative uh well i could leave it blank but i'll put the upper at then zero that's our first one and then it's going to start from zero and it's going to go up by 400 so this is going to be the prior one plus 400 and then I can copy these down until we get to that uh, five six zero zero so I'm just going to copy that down and so that looks right and then I'm just going to co going to copy that f pattern down until we get to the five six uh, zero zero five two I don't need this last one okay so now we can we can say our p of x using our norm dot dist the first one I'm just going to say this is going to be norm dot dist now and this is going to be our x and I'm just going to use the zero as my upper threshold right and then I'm going to say comma the mean I'm going to pick up the mean up top which is over here there's our mean and then comma I'm looking up here norm dot dist and the next one is going to be the standard deviation standard deviation comma and then let's go back on over now that we've entered that and then comma cumulative i want it to be cumulative so i'm going to pick everything up up to that zero point so i'm going to say one for cumulative and enter now on the second one what i wanted to do is take between zero and 400. so what i'm going to do is pick the upper threshold of 400 minus norm dot dist up to zero because now we want that in between calculation so i'm going to say all right this is going to be equal to norm dot dist the x is going to be the higher one the 400 comma the mean and the standard deviation i'm going to go over here to pick those up are going to be mean comma i'm looking up here now to see what i'm doing and then i'm going to say the standard deviation is that one and then comma and then I want this let's bring it back down to where we're at I want this to be cumulative so I'm going to say this is going to be one close it up minus the lower bucket minus another norm dot dist 
and then x is going to be the lower bucket now comma the mean and standard again mean comma i'm looking up here now standard boom comma we want this to be cumulative so i'm going to say one and close it up so that's going to take everything up to the 400 minus the stuff up to the one to the zero which will be the stuff in the middle right so then we're going to say uh enter and so that's going to be let's make these percentages home tab number group percentify add some decimals there we have it now to copy this down the second one i can copy it down but anything that's not in my area here i need to make absolute so if i look at my formulas the x is in here but the mean is not that's over in e so i need to say f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the e and the one same with this one that's over there in e f4 dollar sign before the e and the two over here the m is in here so that's good but this one is outside so f4 dollar sign before the e and the one f4 dollar sign before the e and the two enter then i can click on it and double click and bring it on down so our totals our total to all right, total i'm gonna say alt equals adds up to approximately 100 percent home tab number percentify and there we have it so you can see that this comes out pretty close like if i look at that 20 2400 to 2008 17 12 2400 <laughs> to uh to 2008 17 14 right or 17 13 so if you compare these two it comes out pretty close given the nature of the data that we're looking at because up here we did a pretty fine uh because normally you can't just sum up right because it's the area under the curve but because we had such fine detail on each of these lines down here we actually get pretty close pretty pretty close to if we used uh the the function here on these so we've got 0 0.36 1.04 6.82 6 and so on and so forth okay let's just do some formatting here and and stop this foolishness i'm going to say a home tab font group i'm going to make this blue if you don't have that blue i like to make it standard blue okay put some borders around it if we could i like to have some separation between my stuff i don't like the mashed potatoes all mixed in with the peas on my food plate you, could you put some borders around them if you would this is not this is not anarchy that is happening here we need some order